then. Yeah. Hi, everybody, and welcome to um, the conference and to my session on breakout rooms. My name is Sierra Adair Tatsiwopaape, and I am the instructional technologist in the Center for Teaching and Learning Excellence at Nevada State College. I also um, do some adjunct teaching and I have been an adjunct instructor for many years, um, teaching in the online environment as well as face to face. And um, I am also uh, a very big proponent of gamification, either of elements within a course or gamifying the entire course. And I'm um, fortunate enough that um, uh, just signed a book contract with a stylus for a book on gamification in higher education uh, that's going to be co-authored with um, another faculty member at uh, Nevada State that um, has gamified his whole course, Nate Silva. And so I'm very excited about that. And one of the chapters in there is gamification of elements that, and using escape rooms. Now, escape rooms, you can find all kinds of software that's just phenomenal, um, uh, but it's expensive. So what I have done here is using only the Canvas tools that are available to us, <clears throat> excuse me, through Canvas, I have set up escape rooms. Now, this is a little bit um, more augmented than a standard escape room where, you know, they're in a time situation and the clock is ticking and then you have a, a group discussion afterwards. Um, I actually, this is for an upper level um, ecology class and um, it sets up assignments as well as that ticking clock aspect of answering questions within Canvas and to where the next one won't open up until you correctly answer the previous question. So what I want to do is um, have an actual escape room experience. It's going to be very truncated, unfortunately. <clears throat> In the chat, I have put a link to a PowerPoint, uh, not a PowerPoint, I'm sorry, um, a Padlet that you can uh, set up your answers on. Um, I'm asking you just to, to um, say what mode of travel you would have. And then if you get a chance to, to justify it, and there's a couple of questions that if you want to start answering those is a possibility. I'd like to break everybody up into three breakout rooms. But first, I want to go through the scenario with you. This is for uh, a bighorn sheep escape room. And so congratulations. Your application for a summer internship with the Bighorn Sheep Center has been accepted. You will count bighorn sheep, map their movements, collect samples and analyze them as part of an overall assessment of the bighorn sheep's summer range in the high country of the Wind River Range in Wyoming. Bighorn sheep numbers have decreased in recent years. Why have wildlife biologists suspect some sort of unknown illness has spread among the animals, possibly a crossover from another species? Environmental scientists point to climate change, pollution, invasive species as catalysts for the damage to the vegetation indigenous to the fragile ecosystem in which the bighorn sheep live. Some groups blame the proliferation of wolf reintroduction into Yellowstone National Park. You, uh, what you will be investigating will reveal, uh, will impact the future of bighorn sheep. Even so, you must take extreme care in the high country to not further harm the natural environment for the sake of your scientific inquiry. So Lily, if you could put everybody into three breakout rooms and give them five minutes in which to discuss um, what mode of travel we have three. It's going to be um, uh, backpacking, horse packing, or goat packing. And I have information about each of these modes of travel. And so if you would put your information there, uh, 
under that and then justify based on what you feel are, is going to be the most effective and efficient way um, that is minimizing the effects and damage that you would have on the environment as you conduct your scientific study. Um, the scenario is, is on the Padlet, and so are some general knowledge questions. So let's take about five minutes and um, have our discussion in your groups. Lily, do you have the breakout rooms set up? I think we're going to see any breakup. Pardon? We're going to see any breakup at this point? Are we expected to go somewhere? Uh, yeah. Uh, Lily, are you able to get people into breakout rooms? Yes, I am creating that right now. How many people or how many participants would you like in each room? Uh, it doesn't matter. I just need three uh, different rooms and um, you guys can decide which you think is the best method of travel, backpacking, horse packing, or goat packing. All right, let me get those three rooms set up for you. If you haven't already done so, please join your breakout room. Kent, uh, were you assigned a breakout room? And how about you, Ron? I am online with a student and waiting a phone call to help my elderly mother. So I'm afraid I would let everybody down. So thank you for asking. I'm just going <laughs> to. Uh I understand. <laughs> Too bad. Thank you. How about you, Amelia? I just chatted. I'm so sorry for my tardiness. My Outlook crashed my whole computer. So I'm happy to be assigned to a, a breakout room now, but I had not yet. Uh, okay. Uh, and I, I get that. That's why I'm uh, only joining with my uh, audio uh, because we have a very windy day and on windy days my if I share my video I tend to do what one of my faculty members has classified as zoom uh, botox everything <laughs> freezes up yeah <laughs> 
Um, so if you were late joining, the, I've, I put everybody into breakout rooms uh, to discuss um, a mode of travel um, based on a scenario of um, being a summer intern that's going to be in the high country, counting bighorn sheep, analyzing, etc. Hi, Eric. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I'll start my video too. Um, I'm not able to hear you. Oh, let me make sure. I do see you. Okay, now I'm able to hear you. So right now everyone's in great uh, breakout rooms. And our presenter, Sierra, is just like jumping in between the breakout rooms. Okay, I've just barely jumped in, so I'm not sure exactly what we're doing, but I thought escape rooms, okay, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> so right now she has everyone on this Padlet link, I believe. And okay. They're just discussing between three options on their thoughts on it, I believe. If you'd like with the time remaining, I can let you jump into one of the breakout rooms or if you want to just stay here until the rest of the group comes back. Um, I'm just, I'll just hang out here. I'm going to read this. I just opened up the link and I'm reading it. Okay.
That's a really interesting. I never thought of doing it that way. But you absolutely could. Right. It really is interesting. It's because we're so used to what we're what we usually do with Canvas. Yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking I could break up a project and it, it could be in modules and then I could probably even use Qualtrics a little bit for people to move around things and interact. It would take some doing, but wow, it would be a lot of fun for students. My kids, my students are just, wow, they're just busy and learning is, is just another chore and so it would be great to make it fun. For sure. Yeah, this is a great idea. I've got to I've got to save save this link. So is this your project? No, so I'm just co-hosting and um, the presenter's name is Sierra. Okay. I'm not sure when she wanted me to end the breakout room. So I'm just going to join the breakout room that she's in right now and ask her that really quick. So if you just hang out here oh. for a bit, that's all right. Yeah, no problem. Hi, Lily. Can you um, stop the, the breakout rooms? I only wanted them for five minutes, so. Sorry, I might have missed the time limit that you wanted. I was having issues trying to hear what the session was. So Sierra, we called ourselves the virtual backpackers and left a little note on the padlet. Is that what we? Yes, if, you, if that's what, yeah. Ah, yeah. All right, I'm gonna share my screen again so everybody can hopefully see it. All right. Um, have you gotten everybody it's stopped the breakout rooms, Lily? Yeah, so everyone should be coming back right now. Ah, perfect. All right. Um, we have uh, the virtual backpackers that <laughs> I love that um, that chose backpacking. Um, uh, does one of the virtual backpackers want to kind of walk us through what your thought process was here? I can just give a quick basic idea. One of the, like the first thought was goats, um, but then one of our, one of our members talked about how um, the goats that they use could provide, could bring some um, 
invasive either viruses, things like that into the environment that would be damaging possibly the bighorn sheep. So we decided the least likely to cause problems was us if we were careful. So we were a little worried about the weight that we were all supposed to be able to carry for that distance. So that's why we made it virtual. <laughs> okay. And um, how about the, the handy horse wranglers? Yeah, that's that's Baron's group. We realized uh, that 70, 90 pounds is actually more than we could carry. I was at Philmont for 12 days with a 60 pound back uh, backpack, which was almost twice the recommended weight allowance. And uh, there's just no way you could spend a summer hiking carrying that 70, 90 pounds. Um, we do know that horses um, are, are very independent. Um, they're strong, they're resilient to carry the weight. If we're gonna be collecting supplies and have equipment and tents and everything, we're going to need to, to get some supply uh, animals. And we thought that uh, none of us have experience with goats. And if, if you can take a horse versus a goat, it's easier for you to travel with a goat. You're still walking. And again, back to that, if, if you spend a whole summer walking, uh, we just don't know the high altitude fitness of everybody thinking that we'd want to be able to, to spend time with the horses. Plus it's an adventure. And I think that, you know, horses are, are, are very resilient to native animals out there. And we think that you can protect them as well as the, uh, the animals. And then if there's any wolves, horses also give you a little bit more safety and security by having a larger animal to help uh, provide that for you. Okay, what about our other group? Um, there was a comment left that it was back. So I'm assuming backpacking. Uh, does the other group wanna discuss their thought process? I guess not. <laughs> Is that our group now? Is that um, our... Yes, there, I think so. Okay, so I just got to go summarize because you know, our group is diversified as well. I think nobody knows everything. There's only one. I think Rebecca has that brother who knows how to backpack. So at first we were thinking of goats and then get into the horse idea because we don't know the basic things anyway. But after everybody talk and share their ideas, I think we end up coming up about packing because we thought um, having some goats with us, it could be a harbor as we go along. The horses might have some trouble along the way. We don't know. And a backpacking is the easiest way to go because we don't have to worry about other people or other things out there or other animals, that, but just ourselves. So based on the discussion of everyone, I think we're hung out, but I think most of us ended up having backpacking because I think the animals has other issues again, walking along with a long travel. So that was our discussion on about. Okay, that's great. Um, and that's one of the advantages of doing an escape room uh, in the synchronous online environment is you can put people into the breakout rooms, they can go through the information and then um, come back and have a whole group discussion. If you're doing it in the asynchronous environment, um, it makes it a little bit more problematic. Um, so you have to get a little bit more creative. But the one thing that you have to keep in mind all along is that your escape room is definitely tied to not only the module objectives, but also your course objectives and your program objectives. Um, because if you're just having it, you know, basically to have an escape room, um, that's not going to contribute to the learning experience. So always keep in mind that you have to tie whatever it is that you're doing for your escape room in with um, what your objectives are for that learning period, as well as the course and the program. So as you can see, I had all of them tied to what kind of tasks that, that you would be performing in this escape room and um, also tied into what would have been the prior learning um, if you had been doing this as a student in a real course. Then of course we have what our mission goals are for the intern and 
go through the objectives and you can see how each objective um, matches with the goals and the tasks that are set for the escape room. And then what are going to be your tasks within it. And so um, what you did in the breakout room was just a short piece of, of a greater puzzle that would have been um, justifying what your mode of travel was. And then based on that, you would be discussing um, your equipment list and your supply list and your reroute of uh, your route for your re-rations. Because if you're going to be gone for a long time, you're obviously, you can't carry everything in. Um, and so you're going to have to set up re-ration points. All right. So how I have this set up is using mastery paths. And I'm not sure if, if anybody is uh, familiar with them, but it's how you can actually set people onto a particular pathway and therefore they will only see the information that goes along with that pathway. So instead of having everybody read all the stuff about um, your travel modes once you decide on what it's going to be, then you would get specific to that uh, particular travel mode as far as information goes. Everybody would be getting the, the general questions that would be timed and that's the, the, the traditional escape room where you've got the, the ticking clock while you're doing things. Um, so the students would actually get to choose their travel mode like you did. Um, then they would be justifying it and that would be a piece that would actually be submitted to the, the Canvas site. And um, this looks like a lot of information, but you'll notice that these are only for the particular routes. Um, once you've chosen your travel mode, uh, you would not see any of the other travel modes. You would only see the information attached to your travel mode and the ones that would be for everybody. So the general knowledge questions um, would all be for everybody, but the individual, um, well, your additional information for backpacking, horsepacking, or goat packing, and your supply list that would go along with each one of these animals uh, or uh, backpacking would be specific to just you. And as the students start filling the information in, um, they're only going to, their materials go into the Canvas gradebook and only for them. So in this case, and thank you, Zara, for being one of my fake students in this, um, she chose goat packing. And so therefore, the other mode of travel, the justification for horse packing and backpacking is not even available to her and she would not even see this. The same thing with um, turning in your questions, um, everybody gets those, but for doing the supply list and the, in, the questions that are specific to that one particular area, that student is only going to see those and your grade book is only going to have that available for those students. That allows you to um, sculpt what you're giving to the students based on what they see as their their preferred mode of travel and what they have done to uh, think in terms of of everything that they're going to be submitting all right let me go back to into here so um, I can't see the chat, so is there any questions as we're going on? All right, there is a question from, oh, Michelle asked a question, is Mastery Path an ad on Canvas? To which um, a couple of people have replied that there is a built-in feature for Mastery Path. Yes, Ma uh, Mastery Path comes as part of your Canvas package. You do have to turn it on and you do that by going to settings and going to feature options. 
and just turn on mastery paths in the list and that will actually put it in your course so when you go in to set up what's going to put the people on to the three paths and you are limited to only three paths but when you set that up you have your questions that are going to be determining which pathway that the students are going to be on. So you have the, your three choices and they would say yes to that choice and no to the others. And that will put them on the individual mastery path. So you can see once, once they've made their choice, then the people who chose backpacking would only see information about, you know, justifying your backpacking, having additional information about the, the backpacking, um, and then the general questions that are going to be for everybody. And the, the next question won't open up until you've answered the first one correctly. Then the next one opens and so on until you get through what are your questions about that. Then they would supply the, their uh, supply list that would be for backpacking specific and their their re-ration um, plan and where they're going to meet for re-rations and then they have specific questions about backpacking and then a final one um, th that's going to trigger the badge and so for each level they're only going to get what you see there this works great for the asynchronous. Now, if you're doing a synchronous one, you can still put them on the mastery paths so that they'll only get the information from their chosen group. But you would actually have them doing the, the general questions beforehand and then come together and uh, in their specific groups in the Zoom meeting, um, have them discuss their re-ration plan and develop their supply list and um, then present that as a whole to the class and have a debrief where you, you talk about um, their choices and why they, they made those choices and um, how they might alter it after you have a discussion with, with the different groups that had chosen the different pathways. And Becky so, had another question. Mm -hmm. um, she's asking, how long does it take you to create an assignment like this? That is a good question. Um, it really kind of depends on um, once you've got your, your uh, basic scenario set up, then you can start thinking about what kind of assessments in the form of either questions or in these assignments that the students would have. Um, making sure that they're, they're matching with what your goals are for that module. So it, in this instance, the, the goal is to get students to, to, to think about how they're gonna ethically travel in, in the wilderness and still be able to do the, the kind of scientific inquiry that would be necessary and things that they had learned in previous modules. Um, so it doesn't take that long to set it up once you know what, what your pathways are gonna be and what kind of materials are gonna be needed for each pathway. Um, it's, it's getting to that that stage to where it's like okay this is this is going to be my different pathways and th this is what i really want to emphasize with the students i really want them to get these particular things um so that would be quote in, in this case the goals that were part of your um uh mission once you have those things put together then it comes together very quickly to, to actually set up the the mastery paths the, this part of it where I have put the, the students on the different pathways um, comes together very quickly once I have decided on what my learning objectives are for this escape room. Other questions? Looks like we're just about out of time. 
Um, I did leave a form in the chat. Just a quick Google form, just giving feedback for the presentations that you've attended so far, and also to leave some feedback for Sierra. If you have any other questions, please and let if, us if, know. if anybody has questions, uh, please feel free to email me um, after the the conference. Well, thank you for coming, and um, I hope that um, it at least gives you some ideas of something that you that you can use um, within Canvas with, without having to get any specialized software or um, anything that that's beyond what comes with your Canvas package, which is Mastery Pass and Badger badges. All right. Well, thank you very much for attending, and uh, I hope I gave you something to think about besides horse packing, go packing, and backpacking. Thank you, Michelle.